G'day mateys, it is the Down Under Entrepreneur here and we are bringing you a, another video from the beautiful Taichung, Taiwan. Today we are doing a hot dog hustling video. Uh, that's right, uh, so I'm doing Australian style hot dogs or as we also call them in Australia, the sausage sizzle. Mine's probably a little bit fancier, at least I like to think to, I think they are. Uh, so basically we've got the, the premium fresh bread which is made locally here. Uh, you know, cheese, which I charge extra for. I've got a choice of five sauces. Uh, you know, we've got the onions, and I've got the two types of sausages. So I've got the standard sausage, which is like your normal Australian sausage sizzle. However, uh, Australian sausage is pretty salty and oily, um, so you have to adapt to the local taste wherever you are doing it. If you decide to do something like this, um, you know, that's one thing you have to keep in mind is you have to adapt to the taste of the... Um, uh, like the native population um, I mean you can target expats but like literally like a country like Taiwan there's like about 500,000 expats here out of like 24 million people so you're literally only targeting like about 2 to 5 percent of the population for a, a you know a business if you want to make some serious money you got to target the masses not the minorities um, so we've gone with a locally made Taiwan sausage which is also pork because the dominant religion here is Buddhism so beef is a no-no um, however I will get um, you know elaborate a little bit more on that later and then I've got uh, what's simply called in Chinese is the La Chang or our uh, Aussie Boss Hot Dog, uh, which is pretty popular. It actually sold out in like two hours yesterday. Um, but that's all pork sausage as well. Um, so what we do is we cook it all in here, uh, barbecue it off. Um, we boil it uh, off-site before we come to get uh, as much of the fat out as we can. Um, and we barbecue it off and it sits up here on the rack. We drop the hood and this is like a um, like a two-tiered barbecue. So basically barbecues and smokes and bakes as well. Um, so then it sits up there and obviously smokes and barbecues. Uh, you know, it gives it that nice brown sort of um, color on the outside and makes the, uh, the skin sort of like a little bit crispy, um, but then leaves it like nice and soft and tender and juicy in the middle. Uh, so it gives it a bit of a unique flavor, which is, uh, you know, good. Um, but yeah, basically, I just, uh, you know, I'm not here to really give the business a plug. Um, I'm just sort of, you know, giving you guys a bit of insight into, um, you know, this sort of business if you are doing like night market business. Um, you know, if you're like an expat in a different country and it's something you, you thought about and you wanted to do, um, uh, you know, depending on where you are. Um, it will depend on what you can do, the type of visas you're on, all that sort of stuff like that. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate, my wife's Taiwanese, we got married here, so I've got a spousal visa, so there's absolutely zero restrictions on what I can do, um, hence why I've started a business. Um, but obviously, you know, like I said, uh, if you are going to do something like this, you've got to take into consideration the um, the flavours and the, the, the palate, so to speak, of like the, the majority of the local population, because um, they are going to be the majority of your customers. Um, you know, depending on what your budget's like when you start up, like most of these guys around me, like their rigs... Um, you know, it costs something like about anywhere from like about 150 to 300,000 NTD. Uh, so that's like five to 10 grand US uh, for their little carts. Um, mine, I did myself. Um, I actually couldn't find this type of barbecue anywhere here in Taiwan. Um, so I actually had to get it imported into the country. It cost me about 25,000 NTD um, with import costs. Um, and then with like startup goods, gas, uh, you know, I had to get a special regulator because this isn't made in Taiwan. Um, plus the gas bottle, all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it cost me uh, about 50000 was my bill when I launched, which is considerably lower than um, most vendors. Um, but then again, like, if you're, uh, you know, doing a lot of it yourself, you can save a lot of money, uh, depending on how handy you are with the tools, um, whether you've got a really clear vision of what you want and what you're looking for. Um, and obviously it depends on the country. Some countries will have um, certain regulations and standards that you have to meet in order to do it, uh, in which case you might actually have to get it professionally done, um, unless of course you're familiar with the standards and the regulations and you're capable of doing it yourself. Um, 
but uh, so I mean that's one thing uh, that's that's you know that's the boss man over there he's like a local legend this guy's been here for like 25 years or something like that uh, every day like he pushes his cart down sets it up he's here plugging away till like one o'clock in the morning uh, you know it's like 3 30 in the afternoon now um, but um, you know hello um, so yeah, I mean, you got to keep that in mind. Um, so your startup cost, guys. Um, obviously, how fast do you want to recover your initial investment uh, before you're actually officially a profitable business? Um, will determine on um, you know uh, where you price your product. Um, you know, if you're a foreigner and like a, particularly in an Asian country. Uh, from what I found, or at least this is my personal experience, uh, when I first launched. Um, I priced at a certain level and I'd worked out all the numbers and I went, right, I need to sell this much in order to make my, my uh, investment back, um, which is what I did. Um, but then literally what you will find is probably after the first month or two, think of the, the masses as like your little three-year-old child and you buy it a new toy. Uh, it's got flashing lights and shit. That's going to be like that child's most favorite toy because they know it's going to bug the shit out of you and they're going to play with it and play with it and play with it and play with it every day, every day, every day. And then eventually, probably in about four to six weeks, four to eight weeks' time, the novelty is going to wear off and they're going to start playing with something else. In this particular case, uh, you'll have the new and the exciting factor. Um, you'll get a lot of customers to begin with. I certainly did. I was doing like... Um, you know, when I first started, I was doing like 100, 150,000 a month in sales. Um, and now I've dropped drastically because the whole new and uh, shiny novelty has worn off. Um, so I'm now look just like any other vendor. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously it's, it's time of year. It's summer here at the moment. It's ridiculously hot. It's raining like every second day. Uh, and obviously in a, an open street night market, that doesn't really help your cause. Um, but, uh, you know, your sales are going to drop. Um, and a big mistake I made is I made a lot of money at the beginning and I spent a lot of money at the beginning. I didn't actually keep too much for a rainy day. Um, you know, last month was a really, really, really tough month. Um, so, you know, we had to pull some strings and da-da-da-da-da and, and sort of leverage some places to, to sort of, like, um, make some more money and revenue stream to keep the business going. Um, it is what it is. Uh, this month's certainly already looking up. Um, but yeah, I mean, you gotta you got to be aware of that. When you start, you're going to get pumped, especially as a foreigner, you're going to get pumped. Unless your product is, like, amazing and it feels like there's, like, unicorns and, like, fairies and shit having sex in your customer's mouth. Um, like, you've got one to two months max before you literally, like, just just free fall back to earth okay and you're just like you're going to hit reality really really fast and if you're not prepared for it then you're going to be in a big big trouble um so just be aware of that uh but apart from that um it's it's great um i'm enjoying what i'm doing um uh, meeting the local people you know i had a guy come past before he was one of the rare ones that actually only he was a native taiwanese uh, gentleman um you know one of the indigenous um gentlemen and uh, he literally only spoke the Taiwanese dialect, like I'm barely grasping Chinese. Uh, have, and uh, you know, the Taiwanese dialect is totally different. Um, so like, we, it was quite cool about it, and I just went, oh, I only speak a little bit of Chinese and Chinese to him. And he kind of kept re responded back with, I only speak Taiwanese. And I was just like, oh, and he's like, oh, it's all good, like, you know, have a good day. Uh, and went on his way and uh, whatnot, but I mean that's the other thing as well. You got to uh, sort of keep in mind if you are doing this in a different country, um, you need to uh, get yourself up to speed with at least basic conversational like local language. Hello. Um, and it's certainly going to make things a lot easier for you. Like if I had my, my wife originally helped me uh, down here for the first few months while I was grasping. Uh, and you'll find that there's common phrases that are used like all the time. Key onto those phrases and the, you know, the general answers and responses to them. Um, and then sort of like, you know, it'll be fine. But I mean, if you don't have like uh, a partner that's um, like native to the country and knows the language, 
um, then you're definitely going to need to find yourself some friends. Um, so before you just jump straight in and start a business, I would advise uh, doing a bit of networking, um, you know, finding a couple of friends and stuff that are prepared to go, you know, come and help you out and support you, at least while you first start, while you pick up the basics. Um, but yeah, apart from that, guys, it's uh, it's hot dog life, as you can see. Uh, nobody yet. Uh, so this guy over here, he loves like uh, takoyaki, little octopus balls. And this guy is like an absolute animal. Uh, you know, if I do 40 sales a day, he does 400. Like literally, the guy is just a machine. He's like the king of the market street here. Um, anyway, uh, goals and aspirations. Um, you know, that's 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 the type of guy you want to be. He's my new role model. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from that, guys, I'm going to stop waffling on uh, with shit. But uh, anyway, that's that's like night market life here. That's like a couple basics you really, really need to be aware of. Um, you know, know, know your prices, know where your market's at. And that, that's the other big thing as well. Like the market's going to tell if your product's good. Like everybody's going to come try it when you first start. Um, but then like if you're not getting any customers or you're not getting repeat customers at least, then there's a big problem with your product. You need to go back to the drawing board. You need to have a look at what you're selling, how you're making it, what you're offering, all that sort of stuff like that. Um, because if you're not getting repeat customers and you're not you know, getting customers full stop, then your product's no good. Um, and your business is dead in the water. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of repeat customers now, which is great. Um, you know, a lot of um, new people that have stopped like, coming back regularly. Uh, you know, and aside from the hot dogs, I do nachos as well. So try and have a little bit of variety to offer. Um, but apart from that, yeah, um, you know, just um, work on your price, work on your product, guys. Um, you know, be across your numbers. Um, uh, like I said, um, and know the, the regulations around what you got to do. Know your tax laws, know your business laws, uh, what you can do, what you can't do. All that sort of stuff. Um, and yeah, just like literally have a go, just fucking do it. So, apart from that, Jana and Entrepreneur signing off. Uh, I gotta hustle, I gotta sell some hot dogs, I gotta start saying hello to people and uh, try and get myself some customers. Otherwise, uh, old uh, Taco God is gonna uh, make me look embarrassingly bad. Uh, so, cheers, thanks for watching, catch you in the next video.